Well, it's an honor to have you all three here. You're standing up for our kids. You're standing up for our communities, safe communities, and democratic values. That's what it's all about. And all, all three of you speak so well about why you're doing what you did. President Biden giving a warm welcome to the so-called Tennessee Three weeks after they led gun control protests at the state capitol that landed them at the center of an historic expulsion effort. But no word as to whether the White House plans to extend a similar invitation to the families of the Nashville school shooting victims who are at the center of the tragedy that sparked the protest in the first place. Tommy Laren joins me now on that. Tommy, Joe Biden said thanking those individuals for standing up for kids. What about the families of the three kids who were killed? Where's their invite? It's such a slap in the face, especially because I'm here in the Nashville community, and we are still mourning the loss of the six Christians that were slaughtered at Covenant School. So the fact that first Kamala Harris comes to Nashville, right, and gives her impassioned speech about the Tennessee Three, and then the Tennessee Three go to GMA, and then they go to the White House, the fact that these three are getting a come up off of the death of six Christians here in Nashville, quite frankly, is so repulsive and disgusting to me especially when this White House has not even acknowledged the families of these six Christians. You can't claim to care about the community or care about children or even care about gun violence when you don't address the actual victims of that gun violence. And I would also like to point out, Todd, that we are still awaiting the release of the manifesto from the Nashville trans shooter, which we still have not gotten. So it's a slap in the face all the way around, and the Tennessee community is utterly disgusted by this. What does it say about Democrats and the mainstream media, obviously one and the same, that these three are being lionized like they are? Yeah, no, again, watching Kamala come and give her speech was bad enough. And then watching these three go on their press tour is a whole nother level of disgusting. As I said, getting a come up and celebrity status off of the death of six Christians, I mean, that's enough to make anybody absolutely furious, but especially when you live in the Nashville community. And let's remember, the two of them here, their pasts are a, a little sketchy, a right. little different when we look back at them. And then the third one, I mean, she wasn't even expelled, but but she's really using the come up and then she's adding the race baiting onto that when she knows very well that it has nothing to do with race, why the other two were expelled. So this is an all around horrible situation. In Nashville, we mourn the death of six Christians. We wish the White House would do the same. Yeah, it's virtue signaling on the backs of the dead and it is sickening. Meantime, it may be time for the White House to send in their army of influencers. As a new poll shows, President Biden is losing Gen Z support. Look at this. Just 39 percent of 18 to 29 year olds say they support the president. I believe it's 36%, uh, I stand corrected. That's down 3% from the fall, 5% from last year. But the overall point that I have, Tommy, I thought influencers like Dylan Mulvaney could put lipstick on any of the policy pigs that Joe Biden put out there and the youths of America would just automatically vote for him. What happened? Well, now they want to bring in an army, as you said earlier, of TikTokers, about 100 TikTokers that are supposedly unpaid, but they want to be elevated, even in the White House briefing room, according to some reports, because this is how desperate this administration is for young voters. But I will caution people that look at this and say Biden is losing support amongst Gen Z. He's losing support because he is older, right? He's not losing support because of his policies. I fear that young people still think his policies are working. So that's really the core that we need to get to here, whether it's Joe Biden or another Democrat messenger, we have to make sure these young people understand that just seeing somebody on TikTok laud a politician is not enough. Look a little deeper, look at the policies, and then tell me if you agree with them. We have to do a better job of educating young voters, and we can do it without TikTok influencers, I would hope. And nearly half of the young Americans say they felt unsafe in America in the past month. And get this, nearly one-third are concerned they could personally become homeless one day. I don't know about you, Tommy, but when I was growing up, I didn't know one fellow young person is like, you know, one day I could become homeless. If they still vote for the Democrat, even if they're feeling that at some point you get the government that you vote for, they should vote Republican if they're that concerned. We'll see if they do. Tommy Laren, we thank you. Thank you, guys. Have a great morning. You as well.